What's up guys, Nepenthes here and welcome to another FC25 video. Today is not an Arsenal Evo RTG episode. Uh, don't be confused just because I'm on the Arsenal Evo RTG. Um, but actually today is just me almost making like a video response and a video topic around something I tweeted a couple of days ago that was just kind of a musing of mine whilst I was doing some League SBCs. And I, I kind of got like a real uh, caught in my feelings moment of how RTGs are just dead. Like EA have just killed RTGs. Um, and I'll talk in a bit of depth why today. Um, but I just want to go through the, the tweet that I went through that I said first. And I literally said RTGs are in quite a poor, quite are quite poor in FC games now, aren't they? In FC 25, you can get a very good team in next to no time. So there is no road to glory. Um, the top 1% of players are unobtainable. And I don't actually agree that it's top 1%. It's probably like a little bit less than that. It's probably like the top half a percent. But, you know, just, just for the sake of argument. Um, I said themed RTGs, my Arsenal Evo RTG, for example, take significant portions of time for an upgrade to the point where the account is either just stagnant sometimes for weeks on end, making the road a straight one for thousands of miles with no scenery. I carried on to say, I feel like EA have worked really hard making this game incredibly boring in the pursuit of sales. Maybe I'm off base, but who knows? And it was to my surprise, actually, that so many people responded agreeing with my sentiment because to a degree we've kind of got what we wanted from EA right it's really easy to get packs now it's really easy to get coins and it's really easy to get players there's just it, it just it just made it almost too easy and it's one of those things where we're kind of in a, like a be careful what you wish for situation um that's my camera so dark today. Yes, it's kind of like a be careful what you wish for situation because it just became too easy. And I want to take you through my thought process of what, what I was doing as to why I got really disheartened. And I started looking at previous videos on YouTube that I did of RTGs from like FIFA 22, FIFA 21 and stuff. And I genuinely just got really sad. <clears throat> and some of it is self-inflicted changes and we'll go through the different types of rtgs that we do as a staple these days but i was trying to grind some league sbcs and as you guys know league sbcs or league upgrades as they're called now have been a massive part of my personal road to glory enjoyment over the years because it was a good way to pack players gain coins and also a really good way to just like create content i can't even lie like it was it was it was sometimes painful but it was sometimes really good sitting there spending two or three hours building 20 or 30 league SBCs, opening the moves to go, saving those end packs, and then being like, all right, guys, we've got 20 of these, you know, uh, 100K packs or 20 of these 50K packs or 20 of these prime goal player packs to open. Let's see if we can hit one of these new promo cards. <clears throat> we'll then put one of the new promo cards in the team. We'll play some champs games with it. We'll see how it goes. And that had interest because, first of all, it, it, it garnered interest of how can you afford to do that? Second of all, to how did you do that? To, oh, what did you pack? To, oh, how do they play? Like, there was, there was so many facets of, like, enjoyment from it. But now, he have made it so unnecessarily complicated to even complete League SBCs. Like, having maximum players from one club is just nonsense, right? It, it's just, it's a requirement that is there, quite literally, to reduce how quickly people can complete them. And they want to be in control of that because they don't like the fact that you can complete them quickly. I remember the back in the old day when we actually had the Libertadores and Sudamericana um, League SBCs come, and it was, I think, seven squads for one of them and eight squads for the other one. But at the end, you got a choice of three 88-rated players. And you used to be able to do those in about 12 minutes for one of them. And so it used to be so good going through, you know, you'd get five done in an hour, give or take. You'd get yourself 588 rated cards for an SBC and you'd get yourself loads of packs. It was just overall really, really good and a really efficient way to spend your time on the game. I built one of these League SBCs because in my head I was like, I want to go and build like five or ten of these for Trailblazers and see how we go. And it took me about 25 minutes and I was like, this is crazy. 25 minutes of my time for a tradable small prime silver players pack a tradable small Electrum players pack, an untradable premium gold players pack, an untradable premium mixed players pack, and then the only good pack is the small rare gold players pack, also untradable. I was like, it's going to take me like 
five or six hours to get 10 of these built or, you know, any significant amount of them built. And it's, they're not even great packs. And it's so hard to pack the promo cards, even the deadest promo cards. It's so hard to pack them that I was like, what am I even doing this for? And, and it made me think like, it made me it made me go back to old like SBCs, old old Road to Glories, and look at the the way I was doing the league SBCs then. And I thought we had so much fun. I remember starting. There was one um, Road to Glory. I can't remember if it was twenty three or twenty two, where I started doing league SBCs about two weeks before Team of the Year, and I had over two hundred packs saved by the end of it, and that was great. But the year before that, I started doing it about ten weeks before Team of the Year, and I had hundreds and hundreds of packs saved and it was just nice it was like damn what an actual use of time but in terms of the road to glory in terms of road to glories there, there there's two main staples and there are definitely some nuances and some other differences of styles of road to glories you know we've got the themed rtgs and the timed rtgs which i really like you know i love doing like a 24 or 48 hour rtg or the road to glory where we did everything we could to just get player of the month harlan things like that they're really fun but otherwise you've got two you've got your standard rtg your free to play road to glory where you just play the game uh week in week out you collect your rewards you build your club you use whoever you want but you build your team up and you have fun with it and then you've got the the kind of like club rtgs or the evo rtgs that we've had over this year and last which is where you pick your favorite team player nation whoever it may be and you just evo those players and both of these level of RTGs might possibly be completely dead now because of the way that EA have changed the game. And I sat there and I thought to myself, like, I really like this Arsenal Evo RTG, right? And again, this isn't about this RTG specifically. I've, I've made a point of sticking, like digging my heels in and committing to the Arsenal side of things, come what may with rewards, with ranks, with how many wins or losses I get, with how frustrated I get. I really want to get to the end of the game cycle and be like, yes, this team is dreamy and it's all I ever used. That does introduce its own kind of like problems with like, what, what's the point of playing for rewards if you're waiting for Evos? And there's some nuance to that as well. You know, like we bought and sold Gabriel's promo card. I bought Trossard, uh, Martinelli and Gabriel's informs and then I've sold them again. Uh, I bought this Kai Havertz card. You know, I didn't pack him. I bought him. We've played a hell of a lot of games with him and had a great amount of success with him. But if he gets like another card that's like a 92 rated, we're going to have to sell this. We'll lose coins. But also it's like, I want the best possible team. So I want Vieira. I want Henri. Until they become eclipsed by a promo card or an evolution, I want the best card. So it's like the rewards do have value to me in terms of get, like working towards a better card. but. Because we're at EA's mercy for when we get those rewards, you know, Rivals now is a lot of wins for the rewards. Camps is a lot better, but they, they also both now contain untradeable packs, which doesn't really help. Um, and then Squad Battles is also very, very good, but it's a lot of gameplay for your reward set to get your 200, 300,000 coins per week. And then it's about, okay, then, then what, right? So, the, but it's, it's all about Evos. Now, one of the good things with Evos is we've got some really cool cards already, thanks to Evolutions. For example, this Urian Timber card. It's not like, he's not, you know, Van Dijk or anything, but he does a job, right? He's got great pace, great defending, good dribbling and passing for a centre-back, good physical. He's got jockey and block, and then he's got stopper and ball playing plus. That's fine. Obviously, a Van Dijk or a Maldini or something here would do much better. Um, and then we've got a few other like nice upgrades, you know, like this Gabriel Jesus with Power Shot Plus. Power Shot's really, really strong this year. Do need to put a chem style on him, mind you. Um, but this card's like decent. It's definitely serviceable. It's usable. I've scored 24 goals and 12 assists in the 30 games playing with him. Not a problem at all. I also really like the fact that we could do Evos in uh, Rush this year. You know, it kind of removes that that kind of like bother of like, oh God, have I really got to take this absolute pile of crap? For example, I need to finish Nwanyeri off me to get this evo done i don't want to play in champs or well can't do it in champs anyway but i don't want to play with in rivals with this card it's just it's already hard enough i don't want to make it harder so ea have done a nice job in that regard of making evos doable elsewhere but one of the problems that we have with evolutions and one of the things that ea gave us the impression that they would kind of like not fix this year but change this year is 
the ability to include more players through evolutions so that you can actually build your, your favorite team. What's really interesting about that is that I've already had three evolutions where zero Arsenal players fit into them, especially already not evolved ones. But also like Trailblazers Turbo, zero Arsenal players fit into them. Bag of Tricks, there's like zero Arsenal players. Literally zero Arsenal players fit into this evolution. Then we also had the um, Rapid Wing Mastery. In this one, only Gabriel Martinelli, uh, Raheem Sterling and Leandro Trossard fit. Trossard's got an inform and also has a better Evo path already. Sterling had an SBC card. Gabriel Martinelli gets max pace already. He gets like seven stamina and the roll plus. And it's like, whilst that's a little, little grind, a little upgrade, I'm not actually complaining about it too much. That's not inclusive. You know, making a position explicit like requirement is not inclusive. It's exclusive. Having the number of roll pluses as max three is exclusive. When we look at this one right here, I got so gassed. So gassed when I saw this one because I was like, damn nice. I've got Martin Lewis Skelly, um, who is for some reason a centre mid in this game and not a fullback. But I've got him and I've got him already. Uh, if I show you where he is right now, once he's fully evoed, he becomes this, a 65 rated, two star skill moves, three star weak foot. He's got centre mid and CDM. He's already got nice passing and nice dribbling and nice pace. And he's got nice play styles. You have long ball, tiki tacker, intercept, first touch and relentless. And so I'm looking at this card thinking, oh, yes, this is so legit. Let's go and pop him after I finished him into Playmaker Glow Up. What would he gain? So he would have gained, let me get the uh, Playmaker Glow Up in right here. He would have gained um, 12 more shooting. Sorry, 12 overall. So that would take him to a 70, what was he? It was like a, it was a 66, was he? Like a 78 or whatever. 10 shooting, 11 dribbling. Eight physical, nine pace, eleven passing, and and uh, nine defending. And so when we look at like the card where it would be now, if I add another, how much pace was it? Another nine pace. He's got eighty six pace. Ten shooting. That's irrelevant. His shooting's not very good. His passing would go up eleven. Oh no, it'd only go up seven actually to a maximum of eighty six. But it would it would become really good. His dribbling would go from seventy nine up to 85 and would become really good his defending would go up nine to 71 and it would be decent at that point and his physical would go up eight to 77 which would be a really healthy physical boost it also gained incisive pass um which he doesn't have that would then give him three passing play styles and he would gain uh playmaker plus plus and he would gain uh one star skill move and two star weak foot so he would become four, three star skill moves, four star weak foot. And I was like, how sick is that car going to be already, right? It'll be 77 rated with insane stats, good skill moves, weak foot, really good play styles. And he's actually a car that I'd be like, I'd be really, really engaged to use. The problem is, is you can't have a roll plus plus. And he's got a roll plus plus. And it's like, EA, how have you managed to absolutely ruin the opportunity of having this card in another Evo? based solely off of a roll plus plus that you gave to him from a previous Evo. And it's one of those things where I thought that they would have fixed it this year to the point where instead of it saying you can't have one roll plus plus you and, and because now you'll have two, it should say this will replace your roll plus plus, right? Take the holding plus plus out of him, give him the playmaker plus plus. I'd be totally okay with that. And so when it comes to Evos, they're a bit more exclusive than I thought they would be, not inclusive. I don't mean exclusive as in like, damn, that's nice. I mean, like they are excluding lots of players to the point where on a club RTG, and especially last week, I know, I know last week was a bit of a different week because Evos were broken, but especially last week, it was just like, what am I doing on this account? And so it leaves you in these club RTGs, especially if you're a lesser club. Like with Arsenal, it's a bit different because we've got so many high rated cards. We get so many promo cards and we've got so many icons that are there to work towards. But if you're doing like, I don't know, Cheltenham or something, you don't have an icon or a promo card to go for. You just have your club. So it's like you don't really need rewards. When I think of the Crappers account and the Crappers is the lowest rated RTG where we take the lowest rated players and grind them up. 
the, the coins, the cards, the returns, it's all irrelevant. The other thing that is quite interesting on an account like this, where we do a club uh, setup, is if you do end up happening to pack something that's very good of value, especially when it's untradeable, like a Jude Bellingham that I've got here. Um, who else have I got that's really, really good? We've got Sasich. We've got that Adama Traore card. We've got the Luis Muriel card, Ian Rush icon, Dimitar Berbatov. Um, we've got the Rafinha Inform card. Like, I've got some good cards on this account. Even this Selna card is really good. I wouldn't mind using it. Guti, wouldn't mind trying him. When you've committed to a club RTG, now it's your, your choice. You can go and use these cards if you want to. You don't have to just use your club. But it's like, it makes the rewards a little bit crazy because it's like, damn, last year when I did the Arsenal RTG, I packed Pele. And I was like, I can't not use Pele, man. Like, I have to. So I did. And I kept diving in and out of, oh, do I want it to be just Arsenal or do I want it to be like anything that I pack? And it, it, and it, it internally like plays with my brain of like, what do I actually want from the RTG? And so then I thought to myself, it would be fun to complete all of the SBCs on this account and just, you know, when a new SBC comes out, pop them in with the Arsenal players. If I pack something of great significance, like let's say, for example, I went and packed, I don't know, Makalele. Let me just play with Makalele for like a weekend league or even less than that, maybe like five rivals games. Pop him in over Rice for five games. Be like, damn, that was real fun, guys. Makalele is now going to go back into the club. Declan Rice is going to come back into the team, right? That would be fun. So I sat there, and that's, and that's one of the reasons why I started grinding the league SBCs, because I was like, I really want to get enough fodder to get these SBCs done, because there's a lot of SBCs there. And it, it kind of, it's, it's where it hit me with the fact that EA have really gone out of their way to kill Road to Glory this year, is because whilst there are a lot of players, and it is good that there is a lot of choice, and not everyone is, you know, if you want to do every player, it's, you've either got to put an insane grind in or you've got to um, go to the store. But what I noticed when I was looking at these players is, first of all, I can't do them all, right? The ones that I can do, nobody cares about. You know, like the ones that I can do are the ones that are really affordable. Like, I mean, Salmon's actually quite a good card. But, you know, this Alex Wobe is also quite a good card. But when, when it comes to like some of these ones that are a bit further down the back end here, like this Ibanez. He's not like, he's not pretty. Aldasari, Jurassic. I don't think he's like a great card. He's not a bad card, but I don't think it's like, it's no better than any other card that you could just go and buy on the market for like 5 to 10K, right? Raj Kaley is like not bad. But when it comes to the good cards, whether it be Morgan, whether it be, um, who else have we got here? Raj Kalia, Rafael Varane. He's still there for nine days. Uh, Jorginho Ruter. Like the, the cards that are worth a damn even Rafinha as well, they are so expensive. They are so expensive that it's like, I actually just can't do it. Even on a road to glory where I don't spend coins on anything and I just save all of my rewards, I can't do this Rafinha. So it's not like I could just be like, oh, guys, Rafinha SBC's here. Let me go and do it. Then play with it. Show you guys how good he is. Maybe influence your decision to do him or not. I'm sitting here like, damn, for me to do this Rafinha, I've either got to commit to hours and hours and hours and hours and probably even actually days of grinding league SBCs or I've got to go to the store. Damn. And it just made me, it, again, it made me sit there and think EA have gone out of their way to kill RTGs. And the reason why they've gone out of their way to kill RTGs is because they are more than happy for you to have that 95% squad in no time at all. You don't have to work hard for it, right? You don't have to work hard for it. There are so many good players that are either objectives or um, milestones or SBCs that are cheap that you get to having a very good squad very quickly. And what you can do with a very good squad is get your champs wins as if, like, you know, like the difference of you having like a very good squad that you can get really easily, or an insane squad that is almost impossible to get, might be one or two wins. Instead of getting seven wins, you might get nine. Instead of getting nine wins, you might get 11. But a good squad doesn't account for bad decision-making, just bad skill, uh, bad luck. Like, you know, like, if you're, if you're just a bad player, having a good squad, having a great squad, won't remedy that against very good players, Right? even if they've got bad squads, it just won't. And so you can get the good squads 
very, very easily, which allows you to get the best rank you possibly could in squad battles. It allows you to very, very get, get very close to where you belong in rivals. Might be a bit sweaty to get the win points and stuff like that, but it allows you to get to the place you deserve to be in rivals. And it allows you to get, for the most part, you, the wins in champs. So it becomes a question of what's actually the incentive to improve the squad when it doesn't improve your results, your rewards, or your output? And the answer to that is having fun. And, and that's where like, I started really getting like, like genuinely, like I say, like in my feels, right? People want to have fun on this game, man. And people don't have fun. And I'm not, when I say people, I am generalizing. There are some, some people that will enjoy and, and have fun with, for example, a, um, a Jurassic, right? There's probably some uh, Dortmund fans out there that are like, this is so sick, right? Fair enough. There's probably some Jurassic fans out there that are like, yeah, legit, like, what a card he's got now. I'm going to put him into my weekend league team or into my rivals team. I'm going to have a lot of fun with him. But there's a lot of people that look at this card and think, I, I couldn't care less to play with that card. But there's a lot of people that probably look at this card and think to themselves, damn, I'd like to play with that card. Icky Tacker Plus, four star, four star with all of those stats, those roles, those play styles. Holy, what a card. And I just think, like, I, I wonder if a large part of the negative sentiment around this game now is because EA have pushed the boat out too far that they can't sail back. They've got caught in the wind now. And what I mean by that is because it's so easy to get a very good team, but it's so hard to get any further, and most of the packs in store are untradeable, I think people are actually starting to look at it and think to themselves, damn, I've already got, like, you know, I'm already, like, I don't know, Division 3 in Rivals. I'm already getting 8-9 wins in Champs. I'm already getting Elite 3, 2, or 1 in squad battles with the team that I've got. And that takes up my time. What, what more do I need to do to get to anywhere near that next level? And they look at what's available, and it's like, holy crap, I have to do way too much to get to that next level. And so what do they do? They turn off. And, I, and it's... It's something that's sad for me from a content perspective because, and a content creator's perspective because I like to give you guys the best content that I can make. But unfortunately, with the way the YouTube's like algorithm works and the way that like you know getting views works, is you need now a title and a thumbnail to hook somebody in. Before you never. Before my my road to glories literally used to be called Road to Glory Episode One, Road to Glory Episode Two, Episode Three, Episode Four, Episode One Hundred and Fifty Four. There might sometimes be a bit of wording here or there, but like the, the title and the thumbnail were never the focus. The content was the focus because, like I said, completing an SBC player back in the day, like completing an 82 raid SBC player, had significance because it wasn't easy to get to that 95% squad. You actually had to build towards it. So the question was, oh, I've got my, I don't know, Aaron Wambasaka at right back. Should I spend the 30, 40k that I need to get this SBC done? Is it going to be worthwhile? And now you see an SBC and you're like, that doesn't get anywhere near my team. I can't be bothered with that. Or you see an SBC where you're like, holy crap, that upgrades my team. Oh my God, how expensive is that? And it, it, it's really sad. Like, that for me, if, if I wanted to make, like, if I basically these days, if I put, if I made a video on the brand new SBC, if that Jurassic, for example, no one cares. Because it's either achievable, or which means they don't need somebody else's opinion, they can just go and do it, or it's so unachievable that even me, I can't go and do it. And it's, it's, the, the way YouTube works now is you really have to hook somebody in with a title and a thumbnail. And it's very hard to hook people in when I'm using either the same team over and over and over. There's very little like leeway for... Oh, I switch my strikers around. Oh, let's see how this works. Oh, I've got a new tactic. Like, who gives a damn, right? Because even I don't care to, to a degree. Versus if I run a traditional RTG, um, where I was using anyone and everyone and kind of buying and selling players, trying new tactics and players, that becomes a little bit easier, but you can only recycle that whole, I sold everything for this player like once or twice before people are like, okay, fair enough. Like you're doing it for clicks or whatever. That's fine. 
when I look at this team, I get really attached to it. And, it, and, it, and it, as I said, I don't want to do an RTG where I use anyone and everyone because I really want to use the Arsenal team. I, I'm really connected to this team. I mean, you can see just by the sheer number of uh, games that I've played <clears throat> with these players already, how connected I am to this team. 282 games already with Ben White. 222, 229 with Odegaard. 182 with Raya. 171 with Havertz, 151 with Rice. And this is my second Rice. I bought him initially, and then when I packed him, I sold him. The inform sacker that I purchased, 137. Like, it's it's a lot of games. It's a lot of games that I've played. And I, I, like, I want to build this page up. And do I wish EA did more with stats? Do I wish it, wish it was way more like Football Manager in that regard? Absolutely. But I want to build this up because nothing more would satisfy me personally than having... 1,500 games, 2,000 games, 3,000 games on a player at the end of the game cycle thinking, yeah, goddamn, they were fun. But it has to be... It has to be, like, in line with the power curve. And when you, when, when you go into, into, like, champs now, this weekend, champs, it was the worst experience for me in terms of who I came up against and how good their teams were. Almost every single team had either Baran, Saliba, or Van Dyke, like just a combination of those. Almost every team had some version of either Ruter or a Rafinha. Um, the amount of like Berlin Mendes and Carl Walkers there are now, the amount of Micons I come up against this weekend was crazy. The amount, like basically every team had Salah and Griezmann and it, or, or and Jung Min Son. And it's like <clears throat> everybody's team, because of how easy it is to achieve, is kind of like that out high rank, high rank meta team. And then the odd team I played against had like ridiculous tip, like like icons, like high level icons, like Ronaldo's and stuff. Like it was crazy. But because everybody's team is able to be pushed up to that high ranking meta straight away, it kind of leaves you in a team with a team like this, where it's like it becomes even less desirable to play. And, and I'm talking about this from a position of great fortune of having a team as good as this as the team that I support in the game right now. But like I said, if you're the sort of person that supports, like, I don't know, a West Brom, you're, you're just sitting there like, oh, you know, you don't want a super hyper meta team, but just having that ability to continually upgrade is where you want to be. And I just think, I don't know, man, I just think EA have got it maybe a little bit wrong over the last few years with the way they've really pushed away the ability to grind an account. And I think somebody tweeted it to me, and I wish I saved the tweet because he said it so elegantly and eloquently that I, I can't say it. But he basically said, like, one of the great things that we used to love about Road to Glories on FC, on FIFAs, not even just my series, but people running their own Road to Glory accounts, one of the great things was the actual journey through the game of ever changing and evolving your team. And that's lost now. You don't really evolve or change your team anymore. You, you build your team very quickly to the top meta and you just wait for the next meta card to come to replace. And it's not about the journey of trying different players or anything or anything like that. And it's not about the journey of like growing your team from like, you know, I remember back in the day, you would use those bronze cards and those silver cards at the start because you couldn't afford a gold card. And I'm not saying I want it either that, that way either. But I think, like I say, I think EA have gone out of their way to make it really, really, really hard to get anything. Like they've made it really easy to get 95% and then really hard to do anything beyond that. Marquee matchups used to be a point of interest every week. Now it's pointless. League SBCs used to be a point of interest. Now they're pointless. Um, player SBCs used to be a point of interest. Now they're pointless. Even like objective cards used to be very good. Like, objective cards used to be worth playing for and playing with, and now they're just pointless. Now, when you look at, like, like okay, this Joby Bellingham is decent. We've got a Playstyle Plus and a Roll Plus Plus, and I wonder if he'll fit into the Bellingham Evo that's coming at some point very soon. But this card is, like, it's, it's good. That's it. It's good. And it's probably actually one of the better ones as well. But when we look at, like, the Milestone cards... Nobody cares about these cards, man. They're just terrible. Like, because if they've got good in-game stats, they've got terrible skill moves and weak foot. If they've got good skill moves and weak foot, they've got terrible in-game stats. If they've got good play styles, they've got terrible roles. If they've got good roles, they've got terrible play styles. Like, EA just go out of their way 
to make it so that you just don't care about this card and these cards and these players here. Like EA go out of their way to do it. And when it then also comes down to the game modes being hyper competitive and the fact that we was promised this year like the focus on social play and rush, as good of a game mode it can be in short, is it's 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 kind of had its fill now, hasn't it? Right? Like when it comes to rush, there's a few things I think are wrong with it. Mostly the amount of time it takes play one game like if, if you know seven minute game it actually lasts about 14 or 15 minutes because the amount of pauses and cutscenes and stuff like that but the amount of game the amount of time it takes and the gameplay i think the pitch is too big because the gameplay is just counterattacks. it's just one person hanging on the the uh like offside line the three people defend you counter the ball you pump it up the field you have an easy goal and rinse and repeat and it, it doesn't offer anything tactical or rewarding and so I do think a ranked mode in Rush would change that. Keep an unranked mode too for those that don't want it. But a ranked mode would actually develop play in Rush and it could be a lot of fun. And But the, the whole point of it was like, the whole point from EA was to, to kind of like progress with social play. Because social play is a massive part of gaming. It's huge in things like Call of Duty and things like Fortnite and stuff. But in FIFA or FC, it's a very lonely game to play, right? You've got your champs games, you're playing by yourself. Your rivals games, you can do co-op, but you're playing by yourself. Qualifiers, you play it by yourself. Draft, like you can have somebody join you in draft, but they have to be sat next to you in the room with another controller. You can't have somebody join you like from another console in draft. And uh, there, there's so many things where I'm like, do you know what would be, do, do you know what would like alleviate the frustrations of a road to glory and the fact that they've killed this game for grinders? is if they just made this game open play for other game modes. Like, if you could do co-op champs, that'd be great. If you could do co-op draft, that'd be great. If you could do co-op, uh, well, you could do co-op rush, but if, if, you could, if they had, like, a game mode that actually promoted social play, that would be great. And they haven't. And I realise right now, uh, 30 minutes in, <laughs> maybe a bit longer, I'm just rambling. But I, like I say, I just wanted to kind of, like, I don't know, man. I actually just wanted to sit here and just tell you guys how sad I am. That's all. I, I'm not looking for anything. I'm not looking for sympathy. Not that anyone deserves to give me sympathy because I'm sad about a video game. Like, grow up. Do you know what I mean? But I literally just wanted to come on here and share with you guys my feelings of how sad I am looking back on my old Road to Glories and how much joy I used to have in them, how much we used to do with them, and how much engagement we would get from everything that happened in the game. To the road to glory is now being so significantly different and almost like a an uphill battle to just draw anything from the game on an rtg and so yeah that was it i literally just wanted to explain and express how sad i am with that man because uh yeah it, it, it gets me in my feels and that's it thanks for watching and i'll see you next time i'm out peace